The Science Museum's fascinating galleries are always evolving, but at their core is a celebration of the innovations and inventions that have shaped our world, with a nod to the scientific thinking that will help define the future. And the Agriculture Gallery is testament to this. Groundbreaking when it first opened in 1951, this gallery introduced many thousands of visitors for the first time to the latest innovative farming technology and techniques being adopted in post-war Britain. David, you've kind of studied how the public see farming and landscape, so what's this telling us? Well, this is telling us something about new farming in the uh -huh. mid-20th century. You've got the combine harvesters, you've got the tractors, and you've got it displayed in this diorama, which is characteristic of this agriculture gallery. So the visitor would come and see the new tractors, the new combines in diorama display in model form, and then next to it they might <laughs> see uh, the real thing, the full-size combine. You mentioned them earlier, but the dioramas really are the kind of beating heart of the display here, aren't they? Well, they are, and it was the first time the Science Museum had used them on this scale, but the Agriculture Gallery really brought this to prominence. But they also were able to vividly uh, present you know, the ways in which farming in a new way was operating. Well, vivid is right, because there's real vitality and movement and action in these scenes. Isn't Absolutely. It? it brings out the colours of the machinery, the lighting also shows all the modelled soil and the modelled crops here. It's also notable that the displays are quite low, so not only adults but children could also look at displays like this. And it's the time when agricultural toys are really becoming incredibly popular, so there, there's a bit of a toy landscape about this as well. And are there some sort of narratives about what changed in our attitude to farming that you're seeing in this display? Well, I think what you see here is the fact that there's no perceived conflict between new agricultural technology and landscape. The depictions of landscape in these dioramas are what we might think of as almost traditional English mm -hmm. landscape, mm -hmm. and it's full of new machinery. And we have to remember that this is a period before all of the main environmental critiques of new farming, which we're very familiar with. One of the displays here shows a crop sprayer in an idyllic uh, English landscape setting with some people watching from a bridge as if this is a charming new spectacle mm. rather than something destructive. So it's, what we've got here are effectively time capsules of earlier environmental attitudes and that's what make them, makes them so fascinating. And of course this was still in that post-war world where people could remember hunger and, and farming productivity kept us alive. Absolutely, and this display was put together in that moment after the Second World War where there was a celebration of farming and its productivity. Uh, and it also was, of course, celebrating something that seemed like the future of farming and the future of the countryside, although to now, now to us it looks like something very much of the past. But the display wasn't just about modernity in the 50s and 60s, it did also look back. Absolutely, it has a lot of historic exhibits, but history is itself shown as a story of progress here. So you have old agricultural technologies shown as something which was modern in its own time. This is a model of a threshing machine. The model itself was exhibited at the Great Exhibition in 1851. So something that's old itself becomes a sign of something modern. The dioramas also show past scenes telling a story of progress. And then you have the wonderful wrought iron frieze which runs the whole length of the gallery and starts in ancient Egypt, goes through these scenes of medieval peasant farming uh, in the middle, but by the final part Part of it, you have a scene of the 20th century modern and it ends up with a helicopter uh, flying off as it were. So you move right from the ancient to the modern along the walls of the gallery. So John Liffen, you were part of the curatorial team in the 60s and onwards. I mean, maintaining all this was, was part of your job. Was it, you know, fun or a struggle? Yeah, it was fun. We used to do this particular job on a Friday afternoon. It was our Friday afternoon treat. Well, I'm really intrigued by this one because it's one of the few that's actually got a sort of button with it. Am I allowed to, to give it a press? Go ahead. <laughs> so what is actually uh, happening here in your eyes? Well, it's modelled earth and the tractors each have a different implement on them. So it shows the process of ploughing and raking and rolling. It brings something to life that the visitor wouldn't otherwise see. Of course it gets a little bit caked up with soil from time to time and so my job was to drop the sash down 
and go in with raking implements and pull all the earth together uh, and, and break it up so that it would be ready for another week's operation. So, uh, in, in the broader gallery, were there any changes in the time that you were involved? Yes, there were. When it was refurbished in the mid-60s, we added many good things, including a working milking parlour. It was a full-size stuffed cow, and you could press a button and the cow would be milked and the tail would twitch. <laughs> and then, the, the, bowl, then the, the received milk would be uh, taken round into the bulk holder so you could see the bulk holder functioning as well. So there was a sort of a, a fake udder that, that lactated and gave milk and things, were there? Yeah, absolutely right. And it, was, it would be my job from time to time to change the milk. Because, of course, we weren't using real milk, we were using distilled water with some dissolved oil in it, special cutting oil that goes milky when it's, it's, it's dissolved in the water. We had to empty it out, clean it out and then refill it. Great. All the things that go on in the museum outside the public opening hours. Now, over 60 years since the original gallery opened, the Science Museum team are preparing to close the door on this beautiful but historic display and make way for a new agriculture gallery. Mary, why was it felt that a change was needed? Well, when the gallery opened in 1951, horses were still commonplace on farms and tractors and combine harvesters were the newest technology available. While the gallery tells us a lot about what farming was like in the 1950s and 60s in the UK, it doesn't do very much to tell people uh, the challenges facing farmers in the 21st century. Without giving away too many secrets, what kind of thing can we expect to see in the new gallery? Well, we want to stay faithful to many of the aims of the original gallery. We want to show visitors how their food is being produced and how scientists and engineers are helping farmers to feed 7 billion people every day. We also want to look to the future. Um, it's a monumental achievement that agriculture has kept up with the growing population and science and technology have played a key role in that. But the stakes keep rising. It's not just looming predictions of 9 billion mouths to feed by 2050 and the threats of climate change. It's also that we want a varied diet and we want our food to be enjoyable. So we want to show how science and technology are helping farmers balance those things. The gallery stands out today as being one of the last survivors of a particular kind of display and it evokes some nostalgia, not least in people like me who can remember some of these as farm toys but I'm really excited to see what they'll do with the new gallery that's going to look at the future of farming. Hopefully, there'll still be one or two buttons to press. 